It's Monday, Christmas Day, an absolutely stunning late afternoon here in Palo Desert, California. Around 74 degrees, uh, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. We definitely have the best weather in the country at the moment. Absolutely beautiful. We had a, uh, a beautiful Christmas dinner last night, uh, my entire family. And uh, we have so much to be thankful for. We are truly blessed. I hope that all of you had a wonderful evening last night with your family, or if you're spending the evening or the day with your family members today, I, I hope that you're having a great time, and I, I hope that uh, you give God thanks for, uh, for the experience, because we truly are blessed. We have a lot of problems currently. Um, things are going to get much more chaotic, but we are truly blessed. Uh, while we were having Christmas dinner last night, and we're sitting around, uh, we watched a movie last night on Netflix, and I don't typically watch movies on Netflix, but it was called Leave the World Behind, and I thought I probably should watch a little bit of this movie. Now, I didn't watch the entire movie from end to end, but I watched about 70-80% of this movie. Uh, it was starring Julia Roberts. I, I don't think the acting was great, but it's an apocalyptic movie that is showing... Uh, events taking place in the United States after um, cyber attacks uh, hit us. And so it would show EV cars driving by themselves, crashing into one another, airplanes falling out of the sky, uh, of course, massive um, fighting on the streets of America. People could not watch anything on television. They couldn't get news. They couldn't turn on the internet. They couldn't get email. All communications were shut down. So it was very apocalyptic, kind of had had a theme of maybe uh, an EMP, uh, but they were discussing a lot about uh, cyber attacks. It really kind of was a movie where you kind of had to kind of, um, kind of uh, dissect this yourself and come to basically your own conclusion of who's doing this. Uh, what outside forces or in, inside forces are doing this? Is it a cyber attack? Is it an EMP? Is it both? It left a lot to the imagination, but it made you think. Again, the acting wasn't great. I'm not really a big fan of Julia Roberts. Um, some of the movie just was, in my opinion, stupid. But uh, it also showed one of the um, actors in the movie who, who plays uh, a teenage boy and he gets radiation poisoning, his teeth start falling out. And I'm not going to give all of this away. You should check it out. But his teeth start falling out. So he needs medicine. And so one of the, uh, his father's son, his, his father's friend has a friend in the area. And they drive over there because he believes that this, this guy prepares. Uh, and he probably has the medicine for radiation poisoning. So they go over there. And the gentleman comes out of his home and basically tells the uh, kid's father and his friend to get off his property, even though not the father, but the father's friend knew this guy. This is, it was his idea to go to, to this gentleman's house because he knew he was prepared. And so that, that makes you think too, like if people know you're prepared, the people around you who are not prepared are going to be reaching out for help. These are the people that will be knocking at your door. You know, the people that make fun of you, judge you, tell you that you're, you're being paranoid. This is never going to happen. It's just going to be a financial collapse. Don't you get it? It's just going to be financial. There's not going to be any type of radiation poisoning, EMPs, cyber attacks, grids going down, phones not working, satellites not working, communications not working. No, no, it's just going to be financial, so you don't need to be preparing. So, of course, when things do hit, these, these people that you know and don't even know, they're going to be coming knocking at your door. And so when this gentleman answered the door and came out with a 12-gauge, he basically told both of them to get off of his property. The father's begging uh, for help for his son, and the, the gentleman's friend... Uh, is begging for help also. And so as the guy um, reaches uh, or, or lifts up the 12 gauge, his friend pulls out a weapon, points it at him. Now they're pointing weapons at one another. And so now there's a standoff. So make a long story short, tempers de-escalate. The father has to dish out thousands of dollars for like four pills of medicine for his kid. So see, this is, it makes you think, what are people going to do when something similar to this happens. 
EMP, cyber attack, grids down, whatever, whatever. At some point, people are going to be desperate. They're going to be in need of medicine, food, water, safety, security, shelter, you name it. And they're going to come to people who have these things. And so you've got to be prepared to deal with what's coming. Now, the gentleman who, who told these guys to get off of his property, his friend says, we're not leaving. And that's another thing we've discussed too. When people come knocking at your door, who are your friends? And you say, look, I can't help you. What happens when they don't let you shut the door and they say, we're not leaving? So we, we've all talked about this for a couple of years and this movie – uh, brought it to the realization and, and to the forefront here on the television of, of what that would look like. We're not leaving till we get what we want. That's what one friend is saying to another friend. So that was really, really interesting. So again, leave the world behind. Um, another thing in the movie that I thought was interesting is when things began to unravel just in the very beginning stages of this uh, cyber attack, people began to just not even think about it. Like it, most people didn't even realize they were oblivious to what had just happened, completely oblivious. And then they began to go into denial when things weren't, were, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a glitch. It's temporary. Um, this is not uncommon for this to happen or that to happen. Yeah, the television's out, the computers aren't working, my cell phone doesn't work. Um, you, you know, maybe it's just in our area. Uh, they start going to, to denial that this is no big deal. Then when they begin to realize that there's trouble, uh, when planes are falling out of the sky, uh, when they begin to see cities from a distance burning down because of what's happening on the streets, then the fear sets in, then the panic sets in, and then the realization that they don't know what to do. They don't have security, they don't have food, they don't have water, they don't have a plan. And now you begin to see people get scared. They begin to panic. And so it really makes you really think. Now this movie that's coming out, uh, that's called Civil War, I think it's coming out in February. That movie looks like, I mean with a $75 million budget, that movie looks really intense. That should be an interesting one. But um, an, an interesting movie. And if you get a minute, again, the acting's not that great. I, I didn't really care for a lot of the acting and some of the scenes and whatnot. But it makes you think. And why are we beginning to see more movies like this? So um, leave the world behind. And then we have Civil War coming in February, March. Uh, why are we now beginning to see these movies? And uh, it was interesting to see you know, a, a, this barter of, I'll give you four pills for $2,000. That's the reality of what's coming. If you don't, if you're not putting away things right now, uh, the price of medicine, vitamins, security, food, water, uh, it, it probably won't even be priced in dollars, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to have to have assets to buy other assets. Um, Moving on to the uh, next uh, thing here, I, I was just reading a couple articles this morning, um, and just to, to go along with what's happening here in this country, look, we have so much to be concerned about now with uh, cyber attacks and EMPs and just a, an array uh, of things that really threaten the safety of this country now, but one of the biggest concerns that I have is the economy. Uh, there was an article that came out a few days ago, and we just talked about a building yesterday, but here's another one. Value of Brookfield's Trouble EY Plaza in Los Angeles falls 53%. Uh, the price tag for this building is $211 million. It was worth $446 million three years ago. $275 million is owed on the commercial mortgage-backed security loan presently. Think about what's coming to the banking system here, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, when markets open, nobody's going to talk about commercial real estate because that's not good for the markets. That's not good for the morale of investors. Think about the billions upon billions upon billions of dollars of devastation that these banks are going to feel when these loans come due. And now they're just dropping the keys off to these buildings like this one. 
275 million dollars owed in this building now what are they going to what's the bank going to do with this building nobody wants these buildings people aren't working uh, people certainly aren't working in offices. Um, you look at cities like Los Angeles where people are just fleeing and getting out. Property values of, of commercial real estate are plunging, and this is just the beginning. I mean, how bad could this really get? It could get really, really bad. Here's another one. Keys to Harlem's Lee building. Uh, investment management firm Savannah handed a 12-story office building in Harlem over to its, to its lender to avoid foreclosure. Uh, TBG provided $45 million in financing for the purchase uh, at the time, and Savannah performed or, or refinanced the loan for $54 million in 2019. In 2021, the property was listed for sale for $75 million. There were no takers, no buyers. So think about what this property is worth right now. So. TPG provided a $45 million loan in financing for the purchase of this property, and then they refinanced it uh, for $54 million in 2019. This property is probably worth $20 million, and it's probably not going to sell overnight at that price. So these commercial mortgage-backed security loans are, are absolutely being destroyed. And the banks making these loans are being destroyed. And a lot of these loans uh, are perfor performed by commercial, or excuse, excuse me, regional banks. Regional banks make up 70% 70, uh, 70 of commercial uh, real estate loans. And so think about the devastation we're gonna see in 2024 in regards to the commercial real estate market. This is going to put a lot of stress on the U.S. economy, the markets, uh, people's faith in the banking system. Uh, we're going to see fireworks uh, this coming year, ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt. Uh, now, shifting gears here a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, through, through the uh, holidays, there's been so much crime, uh, so uh, many robberies, burglaries. I could spend hours just talking and reporting the news on what's happening just in California alone with crime. But uh, it says here, caught on camera, police search for suspects who stole uh, uh, <laughs> stole $16,000 in sunglasses at the Sunglass Hut at the Irvine Spectrum Mall, or the Irvine Spectrum. Uh, Irvine is probably one of the safest cities in America, and yet uh, three individuals went in there a few days ago and stole $16,000 in sunglasses in Irvine, California at a sunglass hut. Unbelievable. I was watching the video and it, it's just it, it's just shocking uh, to watch the crime that is out there. And it's so nonchalant. I mean, I, I think these guys rolled up in a white BMW. Most of these crimes now, people are rolling up in Infinities and BMWs, Mercedes. Uh, they're driving nice cars to these crimes. And it's all nonchalant. They just walk in, throw up some hoodies, open up the bags, and walk out with $16,000 in sunglasses uh, completely untouched. It's unbelievable uh, what's going on. The lawlessness that is taking place, especially here in the state of California, is unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. So much local crime, too. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's nice and quiet here, but um, when you talk to, if you have friends in law enforcement and, and when they tell you what's going on, it's, you, you can't even believe it. You really can't. Um, but it is um, shocking. Uh, the time we're living in, the, cr the crime that's taking place. Here's another one. Thieves escape with thousands of dollars worth of jewelry in San Bernardino County. 45 minutes from where I'm making this video. 3.40 a.m. Uh, they began breaking the glass of this uh, jewelry store. Then they cut through the bars and stole thousands of dollars. Uh, during the same week, uh, during the holiday here, Ozell Jewelers in Victorville, which is about an hour and a half away, uh, they got broken into, I believe, for the third time, and seven other businesses uh, over in that area near, near this jewelry store, Ozell, in, in Victorville, seven other businesses broken in, including Best Buy. And so they think that it might uh, all be connected, but it's, it's unbelievable uh, what is taking place 
And, you know, some of these smaller stores, some of these, you know, privately owned mom and pop jewelry stores, this is a really, really big hit. There was a diner. They went in uh, late uh, in, in the uh, night, got into a safe, uh, cut it open, drilled it open, got $30,000 out of that. Uh, and, and just, you know, probably took uh, somebody's life savings. So you got to really, really be careful out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting so so bad, so dangerous. Um, I just never growing up ever, I mean, there's always been crime, yes, but to this extent, no way. I mean, it is just every day, every day, every day, every day, everywhere this stuff is taking place. And then on top of that, uh, we've got this large sewage spill closes Orange County Beach. This happened a couple days ago. 2,000 gallons of sewage uh, was released into the uh, the uh, ocean due to a blockage in a sewer main. So beautiful Laguna Beach, if you've ever been there, I spent a lot of time there when I was younger, uh, lived right in that area. And one of the most beautiful beaches in California. And now it, it was, it's just so common now out here in California with uh, all this sewage uh, in our beautiful beaches, just poisoning the beaches, the marine life. But now they wanna poison us because they're going to, they're going to filter uh, uh, sewage, uh, wastewater here, uh, and allow people to drink it. So this, so they're going to, they're going to filter, uh, sewer water and sewage and put it back into the taps here. So you have, you're going to be drinking sewer water here in California. So most people have been hearing about this, reading about it, uh, watching videos on it. California just passed it. So they're going to filter, uh, sewage and run it through your tap so you can shower in it, you can use it to cook in, maybe you, you, maybe you drink from the tap, I don't. But I, I think it's extremely dangerous because all it's gonna take is, is an accident like the one in Laguna Beach here where 2,000 gallons of sewage goes into the ocean. And that's exactly what will happen. It'll be 2,000 gallons of, of, of sewage that goes into drinking water. And then when people get sick, um, th there'll be nothing they can really do about it. It'll just be an accident and they'll just tell you, don't, you know, don't use your water for a few days and then you'll be fine. But, uh, it, it's just, it's really, really sad. Uh, the quality of life that we're seeing here in America and especially here in California, the quality of life used to be probably one of the best in the country. And now it is now one of the worst in the country. Uh, the beaches in Orange County are polluted. Uh, soon our tap water is going to be polluted. You look along the freeways in California, the garbage, the homelessness, the tents, the crime that is taking place. It's really, really sad uh, to see what's happening. I, I cannot wait uh, to get out of here, but um, really, really sad. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave a little clip here at the very end. I did some training this morning uh, with Elias. Um, I, I think that I, that most people, uh, if you're really, really serious about getting in shape, if you're really, really serious about commitment, uh, you don't have to wait, you know, till January 1st to start. Start now. Get, get in shape right now. Time is running out. You owe it to yourself, your family uh, to get in the best physical shape that you can and the best financial shape that you can. So we trained this morning for uh, about two hours and I just wanted to get it in, start out the week. I know it's Christmas morning, but I'm just motivated and I want to get better and better um, with my technique. And I just think that having defensive skills uh, coming into 2024, you want to have defensive skills. Uh, you should be at the range. You should be on the mats. Uh, you should be at the gym. You should be doing as much as you can. But at the end of the day, the best and most important workout is the workout that teaches you technique and a skill set to defend yourself and your family. You owe it to yourself and your family to be able to take care of business and handle business, to be able to defend yourself and your family. That's why I do it. I, I don't really do it for the workout. I do it because I want to be able to always protect myself and protect my family. And I implement my training um, with my weapon system. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be out of town for the next couple days. I will be dropping videos, but uh, when I get back, I'm going to try to get out to the range. I'll post something probably on Facebook. I'll let all of you know, but it's so important to, to be training, working, um, uh, with the proper tools, the proper technique, the proper training and implementing that with physical uh, defensive training, like jujitsu, like Muay Thai, like boxing. Um, 
and I, I believe that you should be as well rounded as you possibly can. If you, you know, if you have the ability to do it, I understand there's people in wheelchairs, there's people uh, who are older, there's people that have limitations. Uh, so, you know, at that point, surround yourself with the best, strongest people that you can, do what you can. But if you're able bodied, don't use age as an excuse. If you're able body, you should be training defensive combative skills right now. And a little bit will go a long way. Add that and implement that to your, your range training and your weapon systems, and you're just going to be a much, much um, more powerful force to, to deal with. And that's what it's all about, is having the most force possible to be the hardest person in the room to kill. God bless. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe, and continue to walk the walk, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave this clip for you. So I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a beautiful, uh, brisk Monday morning here with uh, Professor Elias. Um, I know that a lot of people are probably comatose right now because they ate too much food last night, they drank too much alcohol. Um, Professor Elias and I decided let's train Monday morning when everybody's hungover or comatose. So here we are. Any words, Professor Elias, today? Any words of advice as we are approaching 2024? And I know people always have those New, Year, those New Year's resolutions, but we started early. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. And I think uh, we should like remember what this day is celebrated for. This day is celebrated uh, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus' birthday. So um, I think that's an important thing. You know, happy birthday to Jesus. And uh, I think the best advice is get started. Uh, regardless, the, the first of the year is just a number, man. So the, when you start getting yourself healthy, every day that you start or the, as soon as you start is a win for you. So let's start winning today. Uh, that's fantastic. Very motivating. And so we'll get a good workout in here for an hour and a half. And I'm looking forward to it. Although I'm a little bit tired, but no excuses. <laughs> I'm here today uh, where most people are comatose, hungover, doing whatever. Unless you're at church this morning. Yes. That's fantastic. Good for them. Um, yes. But uh, thank God. We're very blessed to uh, be here. We're going to try to, to uh, be productive today. And we give all thanks to God. Have a wonderful day. And make sure you're training because I'm going to tell you. 2024 is going to be a chaotic year and exercise is important, but learning and knowing how to defend yourself and having technique uh, is even more important. So remember that.